Howdy folks, this past weekend got another bandsaw. This is actually the second one that came in in the last few weeks. The first one, uh, I was going to do a show on it and it really wasn't all that great. It was a little 10 inch Craftsman uh, knockoff bandsaw from, I think it was Home Shop was the name of the company. Uh, sold it off and sent it on down the road. It just, you know, it was like, it's okay, but I always think there's bandsaws out there that are better. I just haven't found one yet unless you want to spend a lot of money. This is this was a great little buy, I think. The old fella sold it to me and uh, I think he let it go really cheap. Thirty dollars, yeah. So, why? It works. Well, I mean, it, it sort of works. It's really not set up right. So let's take a look. First, it has this little air blower that knocks all the sawdust away. So that's a cool feature. Plus it has this, where you can extend the bed out a little bit. And of course adjustable for angle and all that cool stuff. I am not really a big bandsaw fan, I'm just not. Uh, I've had them in the past and I've had really good ones and really bad ones. I really, you know, I just find they're a tool that's not necessary. For most of you guys, even if you're into woodworking, you probably know yourself, it's like a bandsaw is kind of like, you know, eh, I can live with it, I can live without it, you know. And there's a few cuts every once in a while that come up and go, man, a bandsaw would be really be good for this. And then there's another way to do it. So you're like, eh, okay. So anyways, not in good shape. Runs, it does run, but the first problem, of course, was this plastic uh, from Craftsman. For some reason, I'll open the door here so you can see. Yeah, it used to be gray like that. That's the original crawler. For whatever reason, the UV rays or somebody has attacked this thing and just wipe the color out of it. It's turning the uh, it's turning kind of military green or something. <laughs> yeah. The uh, switch was in good shape. So this works. The little safety piece still here for the lockout. Brushes are still in good shape. The bearings are good. But what's missing is the rubber tires on these wheels. Both wheels have no rubber on them at all. So yeah it wouldn't be really smart to be running it like that. Uh, unfortunately the fella did run it and cut a he even cut a piece of uh, wood in front of me with it before I took it down the road, but it was like, you know, I, I don't even need to see this. Just give me the bandsaw. I'll take it home. I'll deal with it. So, so I've ordered new rubber for these, which they call, a lot of people call them tires. So I ordered new tires for the, for the rims. <laughs> I don't know. I don't come up with this stuff. The uh, blade that's in it is a brand new blade. It's a 3 8 uh, 18 tooth per inch. So. That's a sort of on the, uh, it's not as coarse as you could get for like a wood, but I like a little bit of a fine tooth blade if I'm going to use a bandsaw. because I still want some fairly clean cut work and stuff done. So I ordered that tooth thinking that might be uh, something between coarse and fine. I, I want it somewhere in the middle. So I thought 18 is not bad. There was some cool things about the saw besides this. Uh, this doesn't work. Should tell you that right now. The air thing doesn't work. And I'm going to bring you in closer so you can see huh, what's missing. <laughs> oh, I think so. All right. So here's the air piece, and it goes up around the back, and it comes in back here on a little fitting that's uh, right there behind the wheel. You can see the 90-degree fitting, the elbow. comes over here. Of course, there's a piece of rubber missing here. And if we follow the rubber along, it stops. comes up to about here where there was probably some kind of a pass-through fitting, I think, right here. It, that fitting's gone, too. Then the hose would have come down here where there's the hose again, a little bit of it. And coming back here, stops again. And actually, actually, where that's where it goes out of there to the back of the saw. It's if you hear any really weird noises right now, it's because the uh, <clears throat> there's 30 plus mile an hour winds gusting out there right now. I'm gonna go to the back of the saw, it's gonna be a little dark back here. Let me see if this will adjust. This is the cool thing, it's really a good pump. This is a nice pump. I've already tested the pump, pump works great. And right here is the air fitting, so this blows out and would go over here to that, that hole right there, and that's where your air would be delivered up here to uh, blow the sawdust away. And that's a really neat feature because I know when you're using a bandsaw, that's probably one of the number one things I hate about a bandsaw is when you're cutting, all the saw seems, it just gathers everything up right there in front of you, and in seconds, all of a sudden, you can't see the pencil line that you had to cut or where your cut stops or whatever is going on. So it's kind of frustrating a little bit with these, but that was a really cool feature that uh, Craftsman added. 
no tires that's not working so I need some hose I needed I did I needed a blade so thirty dollars ten dollars for the blade and another ten dollars for the new tires and uh, I'll tell you what I'll put the link in the description below if you need to order a set of tires for a nine inch and I'll show you where I bought them from unfortunately you're they're coming from you know where but and they'll take forever to get here probably two or three weeks but for the ten dollars it's well worth it to have a good set of urethane tires on these machines they'll run quieter and smoother probably than anything that you can put on there right now and the fact that you can buy them even sometimes with old tools like this is like yay so what else did we run into uh, this particular model is really a, a good model I like it it's kind of like my 12 inch table saw it's got cast iron these are cast iron feet down at the bottom here In fact, I'm gonna move this around a little bit I just got awkward and these are cast iron uh, with a, a nice hard metal case except for this plastic door so what we're gonna fix today is this real little deal right here there's a knob missing In fact, it's the knob that keeps the door closed so we're gonna let's fix that normally I would make a wooden knob in the old days and uh, find a bolt like I did here because when you look at this in here and again well, let's close in so here's the door latch it's just a I guess we'll call it like something like a bolt just jam it in there like that kind of thing and that will hold the door because it's just it's just a grab fit kind of thing in fact I can even grind the edges off this down to make a little bit of a point so it goes in a little easier and then if it grabs these here that'll be great or I could even grind some V's into the bolts to so it locks in just a little bit tighter or whatever but uh, here's the door here and I just grabbed the screw out of my junk box of, of junk so see if I can drive that in there or not I think I can. yep there we go and that's now on there so all I need is some sort of a knob with this bolt and uh, buttoned up inside with a nut and a washer and we'll have we'll be back to having a knob on here so today I'm going to print a 3d knob on this uh, woodworkers y'all need to buy a 3d printer okay because they are so awesome for what they can do because I'm gonna make the knob in gray gray plastic that will match the original uh, intentionally like that. <clears throat> gray plastic that will match the gray plastic that's in this box here so so have a nice gray looking craftsman knob you know I don't even know what the knob looked like so we're just gonna make it up as we go along but the first we're gonna need is a piece of paper or a pencil and take some measurements let's get started okay so we've got the good old calipers here and I have a pencil I started using a pencil I'm gonna redo this a little bit for you guys with uh, a sharpie just so you can see what I'm doing but all I'm doing is I've got the bolt stuck in there now and with the door theoretically closed <laughs> I'm measuring the distance to the to what I need here it's a quarter inch bolt so I already know what that it's gonna be around six and six and a half millimeter hole size something like that and a little taper on there I'll put that in the drawing as well and it's about 20 it's about 22 so so here's what I've got let's see if this shows up because uh, did this earlier with a pencil like I said and it, it didn't show but all I did was just basically make a, a, the sketch of a this like this and a little hole going down through well, actually, I actually should have dotted that through because you can't see that hole and there's basically what I did and I measured that and it's 22 millimeters uh, in length in total I'm gonna make this about 40 whoop, about 40 millimeter hopefully you guys can see all this yeah. yeah and the hole will be tapered out like this with uh, about six and a half about 6.5 uh, millimeter for a quarter 20 bolt which is what I have there and then I've got the top I'm gonna measure this is where I love this 22 millimeter this is what I love about metric when you're working on something like this with uh, 3d printing I want this about 12 millimeter so that leaves me exactly with without having to do any real hard math at all that leaves me 10 millimeter on the shaft which will be up against the machine here and I've got a total of and I'm going to do about 17 millimeter uh, on that on the lower smaller part of the shaft right here 10 millimeter back here 12 millimeter there 40 about 40 millimeters around 22 millimeter total depth and that'll give us I look like a mess but guess what that'll I'll go put that on the 
Fusion 360, I'll draw it up and we'll have a knob for this thing in about about an hour. And we come back. Well, the 3D printer is making uh, my new knob. Let's do something else. Are you bored yet? Okay, so if, you, if you've held on to the show this long, there might be a reward here someplace. Oh, okay. It's 30 mile, 30, 40 mile an hour winds out there right now. So just pay no attention to all that racket. Okay, what do I have here? Uh, pocket Jig 100 from Milescraft. Yeah. Uh, brand new. Yes, we're giving this away. And all you have to do is write into our Coffee and Tool Rewards at Reward. Coffee and Tool Reward at gmx.com. I'll put the address right here and just put on the subject line tools, tool, tool, and just the name and an address. And we'll go through and just draw somebody's name and address and we'll mail this out to you for free, you know. And you get, yeah, one of these cool little pocket joint uh, kits from Milescraft. Milescraft makes some really nice stuff. I really like this kit and I just happen to have a couple of them here and guess what there's a big brand new one in the package this is not sponsored by them or anything so uh, I'll tell you what I will provide a link uh, in the description below where you can find a deal on these on the internet I think we'll find them on eBay but anyways we'll, we'll put a link in the description below and it will affiliate to the to the uh, channel so it will help the channel grow whatever a little bit you know but uh, there's a, a prize for you there this week we'll give that away and so hopefully another 20 minutes and hopefully we should have a new knob from the 3D printer for the, for the bands <laughs> when we come back. And there we have it. Uh, the old 3D printer is making us a knob for the uh, Craftsman uh, <laughs> bands. <laughs> Just thought I'd uh, give you a little quick shot of that uh, on the uh, longer 3D uh, Actually, longer LK5 Pro machine. Yeah, let's get that right. And it is longer. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> okay, so I've uh, put a nut and a washer back here on the back side and uh, put the new little knob that I made on the 3D printer. Kind of basic, gray knob though. <clears throat> yeah, gotta have that. And this way, I now I can close that and now it's, it's held and there's no problem. And the door, you know, can be pulled open with a little knob. Not a great fit, uh, probably should have spent a little more time with it, but I uh, just wanted to show you guys today, like I said, look at this, I mean, it's, she's closed, uh, that a 3D printer in a wood shop can be a pretty awesome extra tool because you can make things like this and just make them out of the box. This only took less than an hour after I drew it up on the machine, it produced a knob in less than an hour. And I went and had a you know sandwich or whatever while it was making the knob. Came back, knob's finished. Put the bolt through, put the knob on, and I have a nice plastic knob for Craftsman uh, nine-inch bandsaw. Hey, thank you for watching, and please like, share, and subscribe. Why do I leave this right to the end of the show? A lot of people just dial out by now. And yes, we have that that giveaway and more giveaways coming. So if you stayed up to, into the show all the way to the end. Yeah, next week we've got some giveaway stuff and some discount codes for deals as well coming up next week. So, yeah, cool stuff. Meantime, 3D printing in the woodshop, absolutely.